community is so large. We have the Hawks in the UAE, we have Sings MC in the UAE, uh, we've got Katanas, we've got the Indian group over there as well. Hi Sharad, thank you for flagging off uh, our series called The People of Trip Machine. Uh, now when I started Trip Machine eight years ago, uh, I had this crazy wicked idea of uh, making the world of motorcycles a teeny bit more beautiful. I didn't think anyone would, uh, you know, at least buy our stuff. But uh, it's nice to know that there are more crazy people like me who believed in the project and decided to bring us to their country. Yes, and uh, hence, we just wanted to start this series around it. Um, now, before we begin of uh, what a Rider's Choice does, um, I didn't know that there is a motorcycling culture that exists in the UAE in a country that's uh, super hot and one that's actually dominated by the car culture. So how is the motorcycle culture in UAE? So I think you've made a very important point. Um, I've been in UAE since 2007 and to be honest, up till a few years ago, I had no idea of the biking culture either. Yes, there's lots of fancy cars, lots of fancy buildings, and you would see bikes off and on, but uh, I had never imagined before I started riding in the UAE that the community is so large and it is so um, affectionate, so generous, and the amount of uh, camaraderie that we have over there, it, I was blown away by it. Um, so basically, what the world sees about UAE is most of the time it's going to be the bling, the fancy buildings, the fancy cars, the fancy restaurants and everything. But there's another side to UAE where they've got absolutely beautiful landscapes. The roads are immaculate. And as you start to go out of offs, I would say the main cities, uh, you head into the hills, they've got absolutely beautiful roads that every time, I've been riding there for a few years now, and every time I go on those roads, it's like absolutely, I'm, I'm blown away myself. Uh, by, by, the, by the smoothness, the curves, the, the fact that you're going in an entire group. Um, so it, it's absolutely amazing. Um, as far as the different groups that are concerned, we have the Hogs in the UAE, we have Sings MC in the UAE, uh, we've got Katanas, we've got the Indian group over there as well. So different communities uh, and from all different kinds of countries, it's not that there's an Indian bikers group only and there's like an Arabic bikers group only. So people from all nations, it's all about the motorcycles and it's all about the community that comes with the motorcycles. So of course there is, there is a huge uh, community and uh, it's not that these riders are riding only in winters because yes, as, as you mentioned, Dubai is hot, but we ride in the summers as well. Of course, it's a little less compared to the winters for sure, mm -hmm. but uh, we do rides on, on the weekends at night or super early morning. Um, and as you step into the hills and the, I would say the outskirts, the temperature drops significantly. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, Jabal Jais, which is uh, a famous road, it's been counted as one of the uh, top 10 roads around the world to drive on. Um, the peak of it is uh, at least 10 degrees or, or more different than whatever is the temperature around the country. So it's, it's an absolute pleasure. And you can ride all year long, of course, during winters, it's specifically between November and March. It's absolutely, absolutely splendid. Ah, super. And so tell me, how did Rider's Choice begin? Okay, so so um, I've been, uh, I used to ride when I was younger. Uh, I did not have a bike of my own. Um, parents did not allow it, family was not too happy about it, so obviously I, I didn't have one. But I did ride uh, my friends' motorcycles a lot. Um, but then work started, everything, you know, you kind of lose touch with it. You always want one, but you, you choose, I would say, uh, maybe the more uh, acceptable choice. But then at a, I was at a stage where I was like, I, I need to get back on a bike, right? You, you have that craving. And all, all bikers know this really well. You have that craving that you need to get 
uh, back on the bike. So I started riding in the UAE, UAE a few years ago. I got my license, um, and I went and bought myself a nice 1200cc motorcycle, mm. which is fun to ride, no doubt. Mm. Um, but uh, when I was younger, I used to ride uh, uh, different bikes, but not a 1200cc one. You know, the bikes, even the bike that I uh, passed my driving test on in, in UAE was just a 150cc motorcycle. So the way a 1200cc bike behaves, of course, it, it, you know what to do. But it's one thing to know what to do, and it's one thing to actually, yeah. actually do it, right? So the first group ride I went on, it was a bit of an eye-opening experience for me. I was like, I, I need to up my skills a lot. Um, so, of course, the ideal path, which even now I advise people, is that don't start off with a 1200cc bike, right? <laughs> so start off with a smaller engine mm -hmm. capacity and build your way to, I would say, your dream bike. And unfortunately for me, at the time, there was no option for me to go out and do that. I would have loved to start on, uh, say, a Royal Enfield or a 650cc bike, 350cc, uh, 350cc bike, whatever. But it just wasn't there. So mm -hmm. the initial thought behind Rider's Choice was exactly that. Um, because I also realized that there are a lot of other people like me who have been riding, want to get back on a bike, or just the fact that they want to start riding. Right, so for them and for everyone, they want a nice big bike. At least in the, the people like you and me, we want a nice big bike to ride, old or new or whatever. That's that secondary. But um, ideally, it needs to be a nice dream bike. And mm -hmm. I would think it's safer. And the path to your dream bike needs to be through uh, smaller engine capacities and building up. So that is how Riders Choice initially started. So we offer bikes right from 350cc right up till 1200 and of course the Triumph Rocket which is 2500cc as well. So you can build your way to your uh, dream bike. Ah, perfect. And uh, so you, once, you, one is the rental part, but then what you're saying is you're also helping people get into motorcycling. Correct, correct. So, so again, uh, all of this has started from my own experiences and the places that I uh, saw that uh, you know some help was needed or something that uh, with such a large community can be done uh, which is which is not already being done so um, it, you see a lot of groups uh, sometimes uh, even when you're getting into a bike you get your license you get a bike mm -hmm. you don't know which group you're going to gel with or how to even approach a particular group so over the I think since we started we built a relationship with a lot of uh, communities within the UAE and uh, most of the riding groups are aware of riders choices well, and we ride with them as as often as possible so what also happens is um, you know when when people get their license they come to us whether they rent or not uh, we do group rides and we do group rides with different groups so people have an opportunity to figure out what riding style suits them what kind of people suit them so it's just like an introduction that we can offer to different uh, groups um, and it's not, it's not, of course, it's not a paid service. It's just to build the community. Because when I started riding and I started riding in groups, I realized that uh, this is something that I had never even fathomed. That, uh, you know, the yes, I'm fond of bikes and cars and you like doing that on your own. But riding in a group is a different experience altogether. I agree. The brotherhood that comes when you're riding with your buddies, it's, it's absolutely yeah. unmatched. So I wanted it uh, to be that I can offer people that opportunity that, you know, uh, get right in the group, see how it feels, see what friendships you, you make along the way. Because, again, it, it's all about uh, community, right? If, if you have others like you, you, you find a place that you belong. That's, mm -hmm. that's very important. And I wanted people to have that uh, opportunity and experience as well. So, of course, I, introduce you to, I can introduce you to different groups. What also does tend to happen is that uh, you see your bike, and we are focused more on the retro style, because, again, that's, that's the kind of bikes mm -hmm. that I like, and that is also where Trip Machine came into the picture. Um, I've been using Trip Machine uh, bags and grips and other items for a long time. So when this started, and I was just building more on the idea, um, Trip Machine was one of the first people that I reached out to and said that, hey, I'm look, uh, look, I'm doing this and I want you to be a part of it. And I'm so glad that uh, you decided to partner with us as well. So, uh, so what we do is we have, when you come and you want a bike, you can also rent out uh, a few of the bags that we have from Trip Machine. Or if you want, you can purchase them as well. 
Because wow. um, again, the items like what Trip Machine does is something that you need to hold in your hand and feel. Absolutely. That's where the reality of it comes in, right? Because mm -hmm. you see a lot of stuff online, you see a lot of pictures online, but when you get it, it doesn't match that expectation. But with Trip Machine, it's every time I hold uh, one of your new bags and you've been doing a lot of new bags as well, it's like, this is amazing. And you've thought of all the small, small nuances that bikers face. And the fact that you can use it on the bike or off the bike. And mm -hmm. to be honest, it's it's been also quite a bit of a conversation starter. When someone sees uh, someone carrying one of the triple machine bags, they're always intrigued and they want to ask where you got it from and stuff like that. So so that's why I reached out to triple machine. And uh, also along the same lines, of course, so, so if someone is coming to us and they want a more nostalgic look and feel, they can choose one of our bikes, they can, uh, and we give a helmet with it, and if you want, you can take out a jacket, you can take out boots. Mm -hmm. um, we have some accessories also that you can, you can use either for rental or if you really like it, you can buy it from us as well. So we want to offer, you know, uh, give people an opportunity to relive maybe the olden days to a certain bit. Or if you're just getting into bikes, get into that look and feel and get into that community of being a biker. Ah, super, super. And uh, so as a foreigner, uh, if I have to rent out a motorcycle in the UAE, um, what are the things that I need? So it's, it's very similar to renting out uh, a car as well. So for uh, certain countries, you do not require any extra documentation like most American or European countries. Uh, you can use your uh, license that you have over there as long as it has the motorcycle on it, you can rent from us. Uh, for more of the Asian countries, uh, of course from India, you need an international driving permit. Yes. which I believe you can get here locally. It's, it's not a complicated procedure. So we require that IDP to be available with you and we just take a copy of that IDP, a copy of your passport, um, and so that we can get your paperwork sorted out. And uh, then you can rent to us. It's, it's not complicated. Uh, the one advice we do give to people who have not ridden um, outside of India is that we try and spend some time with them, explain to them the rules, and we give them some pointers on how they can ride safely in the union mm -hmm. as well. It is, it is very safe, yes, but you just need to be reminded of a few pointers here and there. The traffic is a lot faster and uh, just be a little more mindful. It's also more organized. It is, uh, it is organized for sure, but uh, again, I, I wouldn't say that you don't have uh, people who drive rashly over there. That's, that can be found at everywhere, but uh, overall it is definitely uh, very, very safe. Okay, so uh, if I have to write down, um, if I come down and rent a motorcycle um, in UAE, am I allowed to take that motorcycle to different countries outside of UAE as well? Because I believe UAE is as a... Um, you know, as as a land is pretty small, also it's very fast. So you get out of the country extremely fast. Yeah. So am I allowed to take you to different countries around? Yes. So UAE does have a lot of beautiful roads. And next time you're there, I'll, I'll take you around. Um, the closest country we have where most people tend to go is when they take our bikes, uh, is they tend to go to Oman. So we already have coverage and the paperwork required for Oman. Okay. If you need to go to Saudi Arabia or any of the neighboring countries, uh, just make sure that your documentation is sorted out. And for us, we will sort out the documentation. Um, mm -hmm. Just let us know a couple of days or weeks in advance and we'll sort out the paperwork. But yes, you can take it to other countries. Okay. And... Uh what are the things to know uh, in terms of culture um, when you are riding or what are, the, what are the things as a foreigner I need to know if I'm, you know, because the city is pretty sorted, yeah. right? But it's when you are out of the city is when the real culture of that country comes in. Uh, as a foreigner, what are the things that I should keep in mind? So you'll be surprised, but in most places when you go out of your home country, you face a language barrier. In UAE, you will not have that issue at all. Whether you're in the city or you're outside the city, uh, most of the people will speak English. Some of the older population will speak uh, Hindi or Urdu. So you're not going to have a communication issue whatsoever. And uh, the thing about the UAE nationals or even the people who are living there in general, they're very kind and very friendly. So if you, like I've had this experience uh, that I, I broke down on the side of the road, but didn't break. I ran out of fuel, unfortunately. I don't want to admit it, but yes, I ran out of fuel, and I had so many people stop and try to help me out. It, it's not funny, 
and mm. as you go out of the town it's not like you're going to be absolutely in the wilderness there will be some people um, around the population is not much as uh, as soon as you go on the outskirts of the main cities but there's there's plenty of fuel pumps around you're not going to have any fatigue related issues mm -hmm. if you do get tired just stop over at a fuel pump grab a bite to eat they have clean really clean washrooms as well um, so you're, you're sorted as far as you know traveling um, even in fact if you want to do camping right so camping is and motor camping has I would say for the past couple of years a lot of my biker friends have been doing motor camping as well this okay this uh, I would say this November I'm planning to go some motor camping uh, myself for them so it you can you can there are campsites where you can go um, and just uh, hang out put your tent up uh, and relax and then in the morning you'd come back or whatever so when you talk about camping uh, there are designated campsites but if i want to you know be all wild and free and uh, camp wherever i feel like is that allowed like on the maybe on the side of the road or maybe in the middle of the jungle or whatever so so you are allowed to do that as long as you're not trespassing to anyone's property of which course. they, they <laughs> have if they have clear uh, markations that it belongs to someone um, if you want to stop on the side of the road, you can. I would not recommend it. Uh, but nah, next time you're there, I'll show you some nice spots and we can do camping or whatever. Okay. But it's, it's not illegal, if, if that's what you're asking. So how is the food scene in UAE? So food scene is, is, uh, is really good. Um, I would say that they have the best of all the different kinds of cuisines available around the world. Uh, for bikers specifically, when we are going out of the city, one of the all-time favorites is an egg parantha which is just a parantha with egg on it and some cheese and some Oman chips, which are an absolute favorite of uh, everyone in the Middle East. So that's one of the favorites. And Kima parantha is quite popular as well, um, if, if, that is, if that is your thing. Um, the other thing is that when you, when you go out, it's not that you just find small shacks of food. You can, get, you can go to a fancy place as well, because there are a lot of uh, restaurants that are built by the, the tourism department of, of UAE, and they have a lot of, I would say, different cuisines, again, available, so you can suit whatever kind of food you like. But mm -hmm. if you ask me, then it's uh, egg front all the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I also believe because there are... Uh, it's basically a country made by expats, Absolutely. right? Like where, where I'm coming from is that a lot of expats yeah. work in Dubai and the UAE in general. And, and then I feel when, when you have so many people that the options around uh, food become very global. It is. No, the, the food options are definitely uh, global. I, I remember one of my friends, uh, he had come in from Italy and he was going on and on about the the beautiful pizzas that and mozzarella no but and mozzarella <laughs> and bruschetta and everything and he's like you can't it's not possible that it's it's not available anywhere else and we went out for and this was not like a, a super fancy place this was somewhere out of town and i took him to a restaurant where uh, they have nice pizzas and he was really surprised that they're using the same techniques the same kind of flavor which uh, which is absolutely amazing. So depending on whatever kind of food you like, you will get the best kind of food. And uh, for bikers, we like more. At least for me, I like more bite-sized food. So egg parantha, kima parantha. And I think while talking about it also, my mouth is watering. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's, uh, food is a big part of it, of course. Mm. And um, so um, another important thing, uh, I believe for a lot of people, is the alcohol scene, right? Uh, how is the alcohol scene in the UAE? Okay, so so a bit of a so Emirates is made. The Emirates is made out of UAE is made out of uh, seven different Emirates. Yeah. The, there are three most popular ones, which everyone knows about. It's Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Sharjah. So in all of the Emirates, apart from Sharjah, alcohol is okay. In Sharjah, you cannot be carrying alcohol. You cannot be consumed uh, consuming alcohol. They don't serve alcohol. Uh, but in all of the other Emirates, uh, there are places where you can get alcohol easily. It's not like years ago, it used to be that you have to go to, uh, there, were, there were very limited places. Yeah, um, like the options are far and wide. Um, and there is, of course, a zero tolerance for drinking and riding. I, in any case, I think we all agree that that is an absolute no-no. But once yeah. you have reached your destination, you're chilling, you're relaxing and you have uh, beer or whatever kind of alcohol you like available, you can have it, it's not going to be a problem. 
Um, in fact, uh, even during Ramadan, uh, earlier it used to be that food and water was not allowed and restaurants were closed mm-hmm. during the, the fasting period, but that is not the case any longer. Restaurants are open, you can have whatever you want to eat or drink. You just need to make sure that you're being uh, respectful, which I think most people are in, in any case. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you're disrespectful, you anyway. Of course. Bear the consequences, which is... Uh, it, it's, it's not the, the age-old one that will be fine, hugely or whatever. I, I would say that the law enforcement in UAE is very considerate. So as mm-hmm. long as you're not being a nuisance, you're okay. Like even for motorcycles in most places, like now I've realized over here in India that motorcycle modification is a huge issue. Absolutely. Now, now, they are getting a little bit strict on that in the UAE as well. But for the most part, if you're not disturbing people, if you're not disturbing, if you're not drive bombing in a residential area, you're just doing your own rides, you'll be fine. So, for example, all our bikes also have aftermarket exhausts and they sound just the way that they're supposed to be. <laughs> no, I, I'm glad I'm able to do that, honestly. No, I agree that uh, the whole culture of uh, just saying no to everything that exists here in India is a little annoying, right? I, uh, like even if you put a, so a friend of mine changed the color of his hood of his car, yeah, right? The hood, just the, yeah. just the top roof and he got fined for it saying that that's not on the registration certificate. Uh, um, so, so to be honest, for for changing the color, of course, you need to let the government know. So we that that's no, but it's not the car. The whole car is the same. Yeah. Imagine putting a wrap. So usually you have these cars with dual tone, like where you know your roof is black. Yeah. And your car is of a different color. Just the roof, right? And it's a wrap, but uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, here yeah, one you can't change it. Uh, like you to change the full color of the car may be still possible in certain states but uh, otherwise even if you put a, even if you change the headlamp really that's, that's, a bit, a, that's a bit extreme from a halogen to a, um, to one of those LED ones you are still uh, okay. and even if you know the halogen the LED ones are actually all compliant and everything uh, it's just doesn't exist no. Right, um, mm-hmm. of course, exhaust so is a big. Th- no. That way, bike and car <laughs> culture, I would say, it's more accepting as long as you get your permissions in order or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, you'll be fine. Uh, okay, and uh, so tell me, um, for somebody like me who wants to do a trip of say seven days in the UAE, and I want to rent. Uh, a motorcycle, a decently sized motorcycle, like like around R90, mm-hmm. and uh, stay in a three-star hotel. Uh, what does that whole trip uh, financially cost me? Except the, of course, the plane tickets. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what does it cost to do a trip like this in the UAE? So, of course, as as you, you already mentioned, three star or whatever, but there's a dearth of, I would say, different ranges, whether it's a hotel or a motorcycle you're choosing. So, we'll start anyway from 200 dirhams all the way up to, I would say, 1,200 dirhams for maybe the, the rocket. So, you can choose whatever price point suits you. But, for example, for an R&T, uh, a three star uh, hotel, which is, of course, going to be very decent, um, I would say around 4,000 dirhams is just a ballpark figure of what you would expect to spend over a week's time. So it, it's not, so there is a belief of course that everything is expensive in UAE and most of it is, but not everything. So, and, and fuel is cheap, a lot cheaper than over here. So you don't need to worry about that at all. Okay. And fuel, fuel is negligible still? It, it's not negligible uh, any longer, but it's still cheaper than, than India for sure. Okay. Okay. Yes. And uh, perfect. And so um, when I come down to uh, say rider's choice to uh, if I want to do a trip like this for seven days um, do I still need to carry all my gear and my you don't need to carry anything at all when you take a bike from us we give you a helmet if you want you can take a jacket you can take uh, boots you can take the protection Mm -hmm. we can even give you supply you with a cardo if you want if you want to talk with your buddies on the ride or just listen to some music so we do the full I would say end-to-end uh, package and uh, you can do it in style because all of our stuff is 
themed towards a more retro um, outlook, uh, if you will. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Because the biggest problem around doing a trip like this in a different country is carrying all your gear. Yeah. And carrying all your gear is like 10 kgs, you know, no, with the helmet and okay, this. And is and something, this. an experience I had as well, that I was traveling and half of my bag was my helmet and my pants and my jacket. Right? Yeah, boots. And boots. So, so you can take anything. We've got different sizes available. So... Just uh, come in, try everything on, and then you're good to go. Super. Um, well, that's about it. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here in the workshop today. Thank you for having me. And I just want to add that uh, being here today, looking at meeting your team and looking at the work that you're doing, um, it has surpassed my expectations, right? So it is one thing for, and, and I don't know if I can emphasize this enough to people who are just thinking about uh, drip machine products, uh, it is one thing to see something online and appreciate it online and it might look good but when you finally hold it in your hand you realize what is the value, what is the quality that you're getting. So I'm glad that uh, we are partnering uh, on this and I'm happy to be a supplier and I can assure you that anyone who has ever taken any trip machine stuff from us has always had uh, raving reviews of it. Super and uh, would you like to tell everybody how do they reach out to Rider's Choice if okay. So you can contact us on, uh, you can follow us on Instagram at riderschoice.ae or go to our website which is again riderschoice.ae, message us on uh, WhatsApp and uh, or, or book the bike online and uh, we'll be happy to help.